Is that better? Okay, so uh, we're gonna use actually a technology to present another technology, in this case GIS uh, story maps. How many GIS people we have here? Okay, so you've used, many of you probably have used story maps platform. It's a free application that anybody can use on GIS, on GIS online. And so um, what we're going to do is basically run through this real quick because we're standing between you and the tour, right? So, <laughs> so uh, we're from UNC Chapel Hill and um, University of North Carolina system has 17 campuses throughout the state and each campus is run independently. So each campus chooses their facilities management and tools and all technologies that they use. So, but before we actually talk about our campus, just a little bit of a quick agenda. We're gonna talk about this project. This is pr primarily a story about a research project that we conducted with a, one of our partners, Precision Hawk, and um, I think Jeff uh, is here from Precision Hawk. He's the vice president of construction uh, services. So his firm and us basically We'll um, develop this uh, presentation and we'll show that to you. And these are the, some of the things that we wanna touch base when we are using UAV or drone in, and its uses in facilities management. I'm sure that uh, all of us are here to make things more effective and efficient. So this is a way to make things efficient. But before we go there, we have a little video that we can show you that talks about the, this is our main campus, is about 800 acres. So it just uh, discusses some of the sites and scenes and we show you some of the information, so. So university is really uh, is an, one of the oldest, actually the oldest public university in the country. So we have a lot of old buildings and that really poses a lot of challenges for us. And many of these buildings are on the historical registry, both either in the state or nationally. So we can't really tear them down and replace them. So we have to do everything we can to preserve them. So University really has a lot of land, but the main campus that you see is about 800 plus acres in downtown Chapel Hill. And it's comprised of the School of Medicine and many other School of Arts and Sciences and business and um, you know, some of the other health affair um, campuses that you see throughout the, this 800 plus acres. And I'm sure that you can appreciate all of you and us really are dealing with diversity of buildings and type of businesses that we have to take care of. So we thought that, um, you know, just a little bit about our partnership with uh, Precision Hawk. So one day I was sitting in my office and somebody from Precision Hawk <laughs> called me and said, hey, we would like to actually work with you because we have been in the agricultural space using drones and doing a lot of research in that area and we would like to work with you to actually prove some of the use cases for facilities management. And this uh, that's, was the beginning of it and then we met and this was basically a uh, a, a great way to collaborate and discover these things. So, uh, but before we get started, really, if you're trying to fly drones, there's a lot of rules and regulations, including FAA rules, and you know, for commercial applications, then the university's um, you know uh, rules. If you can bring that down a little bit, so you can see, university has its own policy. Then there's state rules that you have to abide by. Then health and safety, and many other consideration. And our uh, policy statement is on our website. It's public for everybody to see, and you can see that um, you know it's something that. We, we even, if you're running that uh, a, a vehicle on our campus, we have to actually follow these rules and regulations, including if we hire a consultant. So you can see that as we go forward with this, there are some standards that we have to follow, you know, the elevations that we can or we cannot fly, uh, you know, in terms of when we can fly, um, all of those type of things are uh, articulated in these uh, standards. So, and because of this, we actually have to get a permit every time that 
we are doing a flight uh, flyover, we have to actually file a flight plan, specifically which buildings, time and date, and places that we would like to fly, and who's going to fly, who's the pilot, their numbers, and everything else. And they get, that gets approved by the university's public safety, and then in advance, before we can actually continue. So that's a bit just about the rules and regulations. Uh, but there are some technical considerations regarding uh, you know, how you, you have to be aware in terms of the weather, for example. You cannot fly over certain miles per hour. What is that, 20, Jeff? Uh, mile, yeah, uh, wind speed that you know, you're not allowed to do that for obvious reasons. The type of sensors, the type of things that you're trying to do, if you're just trying to capture video or just uh, regular photos, then uh, those are uh, easily done, but uh, in terms of capturing and doing investigation of uh, roofing and envelope, you're going to need a specific sensors mounted on the drone that includes infrared sensors and rate, you know, or LIDAR and other type of things. And the other thing that we discovered was that we have to have plenty of batteries in the hands because you're going to need them. Uh, of course, make sure that you have plenty of GPS signal on your campus. So these are some of the use cases that we're going to touch base with. So uh, one of the things that we do on our campus, we're unique in terms of having our own in-house facilities condition assessment. We've had that for 10 years. So we continually assess our buildings. We have an architect and, elec and one electrical engineer and one mechanical. And we, their primary job is to just continually assess the condition of our buildings and prioritize the deficiencies. And then all of that gets folded into our capital plan, whether it's a five or 10 years. So, and so this actually was a great uh, tool for us to be able to use uh, a UAV to be able to enclosure, roofing, uh, GIS, and many other applications. So we're going to touch base on all of these things as we go forward. Uh, I'm sure that you, know, you can imagine that if you wanted to do a window or envelope inspection, it's really costly to erect uh, scaffolding and try to do it safely with ladders and other means of getting up there. So having and running a drone for half an hour or 45 minutes, you can easily capture imagery that you can use back in the office and zoom into and zoom in and out of that so accomplish these things. So this was a case that we, it's one of our buildings on central campus that we had major leaks throughout the facade of this projection window. As you can see that we actually didn't have any means of going to top of this roof because our EHS and EHS would not allow us to go up there because there is no roof fall protection and then we couldn't reach it with ladders or any other means. So we actually deployed a drone and we discovered that there was a Christmas tree was growing uh, on top of this roof, as you can see. Uh, and that tree actually, the root uh, has penetrated the, um, the roof membrane and was causing really major havoc um, throughout the whole uh, projection window system. So, um, so that was just a uh, case study. And then in other areas of the case studies that we did, our um, residential department came us and told us, okay, we have a lot of historic facilities with roofs that have slates, and we have no means of uh, getting to these high sloped roofs. So we actually performed um, an investigation for them using UAVs both infrared and RGB and identified all of those areas that had broken slates and damaged areas that we needed to repair. So this information then turned into um, our facilities planning department to further cost estimating and analysis. So now that's becoming a project. So in some, in some cases, we are actually replacing the entire roof because, because of the age and current conditions. I want to articulate that this is um, our Keenan and Moorhead chemistry lab. And this, uh, we actually received some information from the building managers that we have concrete uh, chunks are falling on top of uh, students and professors. And so this is a very dangerous situation. And our EHNS was concerned uh, about that to a point that they were going to actually shut the building down. So what we actually did, we deployed a drone to actually scan the entire envelope of this. And then along the way, uh, we took a video scan and also photograph of this. And we're going to just show you just a bit of that. You can, you can see that um, 
that we had some good insight into what was happening um, in terms of identifying some of the um, deficiencies. So um, uh, this is a great tool because we didn't have any other way really uh, get close to those areas to be sure that this building it might have some issues, but still um, is safe uh, to, for the occupants. So it's a high-rise building, so as we are scanning this, you can notice that we're noticing a lot of uh, cracked walls that uh, basically moisture can penetrate into those areas and cause havoc in terms of corroding the rebars. And these are the areas of interest for us. Uh, but in addition to these um, uh, areas, we also discovered uh, there were actually exposed uh, rebars that needed to be corrected uh, in addition to uh, some concrete areas that were damaged that we needed to take care of. So uh, this is just uh, some of the information and the data actually, our architects actually took the data and then went uh, frame by frame and photo by photo to look at the concrete spall and those areas and then at least we had assurance that we don't really have, that might have been an incidence that was unique so um, we actually continue now using the facility. Uh, at the same time, we do have a consulting or structural engineer is reviewing uh, to provide repairs uh, to correct this uh, deficiency for us. So same thing also, this is our Keenan football stadium. And we had um, our pilots from Precision Hawk actually uh, try to um, identify some of the same type of structural deficiencies. So in a case, in both cases, I have to say that we couldn't actually program the drone manu uh, automatically to go and gather the data for us. So this is where really a skilled pilot comes in because you have to re really get really close to those structures and to take the imagery. So obviously you have to be licensed and experienced and we were able to do this in a matter of a couple of hours, the entire stadium, and this allowed us to identify those deficiencies and put a cost to it so we can move forward with the repairs. So, um, and then as you're moving forward, um, you can also, um, um, Catherine, you may wanna talk about this piece here Right, so this um, water tower is an iconic feature um, on campus. We have several. And this went through a paint job. And again, this is just a way to inspect or keep, keep an inspection on the progress of um, a repair or a renovation in difficult to reach areas. Um, I'm gonna give this back to a boss to talk about Campus Bird. Okay, so we use a product um, for our campus mapping. It's called uh, Campus Bird, and this particular map is our, uh, I guess, outside facing for our visitors that is fully searchable and has a lot of content. So you can sort of see that this map actually is not a photograph, but it's fully rendered. And it's rendered by our uh, consultant, and we actually have a uh, content management system behind it that we can manage everything else. So if you can click, Catherine, on uh, buildings there, and you can see that there are lots of uh, things pop up, icons pop up that would give you information. You can, for example, attach, um, you know, uh, photography in there. This is, in this case, is one of res halls, and we're doing 360 photos that uh, this is all public, so it can be hosted on this map. But uh, the point is that this map, obviously, because of new construction and renovation, especially to the landscape or buildings, has to get updated uh, frequently. And we don't have a means of doing a flyover with a fixed wing aircraft that we do every two or three years. So this is a great place um, to actually use a drone. In this case, we are relocating our track and field facilities to do where you see these soccer field practice fields are. And from here on, you can see that we can easily capture a drone imagery in the next slide uh, that shows uh, the almost uh, fully um, you know, finished construction of the track and a couple of soccer and lacrosse fields. And from there, uh, you know, the folks at uh, 
precision. Uh, Hawk really helped us with this. And also people who are maintaining the map, they can take this and update the map way before the construction is completed. So we don't have to wait for the completion of it. So another project and use case that we have um, explored is use of uh, drones in uh, capturing progress of construction. So this is an area of campus near Franklin Street, north of campus, that we were trying to beautify and improve. And so we were able to actually capture drone photos and convert them into, in the next slides, you can see the 3D imagery. And these 3D imageries are crude, but yet very effective, and they can really be rich depending on number of photos that you can capture. So this is a great way of doing some site 3D, and I'm gonna show you in one of them in the next couple of slides. This is again an aerial imagery of the same area that can actually be georeferenced and brought into our GIS system, so we can go ahead and fill that area with the newly renovated area. Catherine, you want to talk about this? Oh, right. So this was an, um, an, another use for uh, video, drone video, was to communicate uh, through a story map the Three Zeros Initiative. This is a chancellor's initiative to reduce our environmental footprint on campus. And we do that through net zero water usage um, zero waste to landfill, and net zero greenhouse gas emissions. So I worked with a student intern to create the story map, and she needed some really rich content to include in the story map. You see how we're using the story map here and trying to put in some engaging um, content. So for about two hours of drone video work, Christy, um, synthesized all that down um, to just a few seconds to convey how we capture water on campus. And this video is in, available in the um, story map. And also how we capture sunlight on campus. So almost two hours worth of video work brought into the Adobe Creative Cloud to help us communicate some of our successes on campus. Oh, here's another one. And again, this is a communications tool now. This is an area on campus that uh, just had some, some issues with it, some stormwater issues. It's a battle grove, and there's a creek, a tributary underneath that. That was giving the grounds department a little bit of problems because um, the ground was always wet, so mowing and caring for the that lot was really difficult, and it had been targeted to daylight that area. So you can see that what we wanted to do is communicate the success of that daylighting project, and we did that by capturing some drone images. We share that then with uh, the stormwater folks who, or environmental health and safety, or campus, to start looking or putting that that imagery out there to the public um, to, again, to communicate some of the successes. It's a, you know, you can see the difference in, in the quality um, of the photography. So, here's another instance where we were taking, um, let me put that here. Kind of, hard to drive and hold the mic at the same time. Okay, thanks. So this is where we took some of the imagery that we got from Precision Hawk, um, put it into our ArcGIS online account so that we could monitor and share the um, progress of this construction site. Um, let me stop for a minute because you, you want to know that this is our new Fetzer soccer um, stadium and indoor practice facility. It's, uh, it's gonna be world class. You know, we're flagship university, so we do everything um, world class. But this, 
allows you, I'm just using a web app builder, an ArcGIS online, that people can then interact with this imagery um, and see the, the progress of the construction site. And I have to add that this is also for uh, construction uh, and contractor liability. It shows exactly where the construction progress is in terms of if you uh, you know uh, lose the schedule uh, or there are other issues related to construction material. In fact, uh, now there are analytics and technology that actually can measure the volumes of the um, material uh, that you see on that site and provide that uh, to contractors and owners. Here's just another way to engage with that same data. Again, this is ArcGIS Online. Um, underneath is a layer of our 2015 aerial photography. When you, you can see what the site looked like beforehand. And then zoom in and see the, the difference. Um, again, just another, these are tools that we all have, well, some, you know, hopefully you have that you can use to, to engage your audience. And now we'll go over to Sketchfab. So what Catherine is showing that the same imagery can actually turn into, be turned into a 3D uh, that I talked uh, earlier and then this is actually uh, another platform online that you can upload um, your, um, uh, you know, information from this uh, 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 drone, and then uh, you can actually look at the. Uh, it will create a 3D uh, view of this, so you can sort of. And a lot of the resolution and the richness of this depends, obviously, a lot on how much uh, video you capture. So this is this shows the basically the indoor um, the practice facility and in front of that is going to be the lacrosse and soccer stadium in the future, hopefully by the end of this fall. Right, and if you have enough um, images that you've captured, um, you can bring those images into uh, like Sketchfab and create these 3D models. And Precision Hawk also um, provided us with 3D models as well. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to end here because uh, I know that many of us on our campuses have underground utilities, we have steam uh, tunnels, we have confined spaces that we can actually use drones for indoors. I wanted to show you this uh, video from uh, YouTube that you can see that there are possibilities uh, with the smaller specifically designed uh, drones or UAVs that you can actually do these type of inspections too. Today we're inspecting East River 60, 60 boiler using UAV. We're using the UAV to go into a confined space and do our boiler inspections. So we, we're not going to need to enter the space. We don't need the use for scaffolding to look at our critical components. It'll save us time and save us money. Uh, behind us is East River 60 boiler. Uh, East River 60 produces about 1.2 million pounds an hour of steam and generates close, close to about 150 megawatts of electricity. As part of the inspection, we look at the burners to make sure the burners are functioning properly. If we find a problem, we're able to react a lot quicker. Without a drone, we would normally have to send a person in there. Before doing that, we'd have to erect uh, several stories of scaffolding so that, just so they could get up. Uh, that takes uh, a lot of time and uh, money as well as the, adding the danger of working at heights. The boiler behind me is about 120 feet tall or about equivalent to about 10 stories. The benefit of having the UAV is that we'll no longer need to enter confined spaces, so we'll be able to work at heights without having to spend a lot of money, saving our customers and being able to return a boiler to service a lot quicker, producing steam and electricity for the company. So we haven't even touched base on you know, our 
environment and health and safety, our public safety. They want to use this type of uh, this type of. Uh, Today we're inspecting East River 60 60 boil. Okay, thank you. So. Uh, uh, so use it for um, you know public safety and managing crowd traffic control. So there is really, I would say that uh, you know hundreds and probably several hundred uses of this. That these are just some of the things that we have actually done in this project, and I want to share that with you. So uh, we'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Yes. Right. So I know of that. Uh, okay. So the question was that: uh, Do we see if the universities actually own uh, drones, or they actually, um, you know, use um, consultants so people operate these things? I think it's a combination, is a hybrid thing. So um, we actually have. Um, I know several universities uh, that do own their drones because these are really very inexpensive now, the vehicle it is, but the sensors can be costly, but you can actually, you know, prove an uh, ROI on these. So we've, I've hired actually several, um, you know, there are a lot of drone uh, consulting companies you can hire, but I think just uh, coordinating and trying to uh, do the logistics is very difficult. We actually have one of our engineers is already FAA uh, licensed uh, to run drones, so we are planning this is a use case for us, for the university to actually own one in the facilities. I know that in the communications department at the university, they do have one. They do photo photography for uh, marketing and those kinds of things. But I really do see that these are becoming just like uh, you know, a camera, like a 360 camera or any other tools. Uh, there is nothing, you just have to be comfortable. I know that some of the senior managements are a little hesitant about this, but I think that I would see in the next five years that you will see a lot of uh, interest and universities will own these. Yes? So when you collect data through a drone, where do you store that? Is it tied to your GIS or is it on a separate server? Or is, do you have a content management for this type of stuff? Right. So it's just, you know, basically when you capture data from a drone, it comes on an SD card, right? So typically you can just carry a laptop like that. Uh, and just uh, pop it in and just uh, that would, uh, download it on the hard drive or you can actually carry an external hard, hard drive to put it on there. And from there on, depending where you put stuff, it's just like any other data content. For us, we have a document management system that we basically put it in there and we uh, tag it and put all the attributes on it so it can be discovered and found by you know, everybody who needs that type of information. Because from there, you can use it for different purposes. ArcGIS Online is one of them. We bring it into presentations or bring it into uh, you know, other applications. You can attach it uh, to your assets in your CMMS system. So there's a lot of places that bring into your um, doc management. We talked about that. Well, and that's the challenge. Yeah. There, there are all these ways to collect data. Yeah. And there's all these sensors and everything. And that's what I, I work in IT. And sure. My thing is, is, that's great that we can collect all this. But I don't want it to just sit somewhere. Right. I want to be able to have it in the system where I can manage it. And part of that is, is, uh, is it something that's easy to put into a content management system and then you know, connect or get to? Yes. Matter of fact, you know, we're trying to get away from folder um, you know, management because foldering is something from 1970s technology. We all really need to into a move into a managed uh, document management system. And there are hundreds of them out there. Find something that works for you and then use it because you won't be able to find stuff going 10 folder deeps you know, a month from now because you've forgotten about it. And it's not searchable, but with the doc management, really is the best way to go, and we are doing that. Exactly. Not only do you have 10 files now, but now you have 10,000. It's about when I'm retired and somebody else comes in, they can find it. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Have you tried to create the meshes from the coin cloud that the UAVs collect? 
You know, we really have not done that yet. Again, we're at the kind of a very beginning of this stage. So we're looking, exploring, and looking use cases. And, you know, we're trying to see if we can bring this stuff into Archibus or into even a BIM environment and see how it functions. So there's, you know, there's a lot of possibilities. We haven't done that yet. <laughs> okay. Well, folks, thank you very much. Um, we appreciate it and have a great tour.